Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerning Hearts, in cooperation with the Poor Clare Nuns of the Monastery of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Cluny Media, presents excerpts from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting, written by Mother Mary Frances. In this episode, Mother Mary Frances speaks of giving evidence. Second Sunday of Advent, Year A, Giving Evidence The Church is saying to us again and again, Now is the acceptable time. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 This Advent will never come again. Perhaps God will bless us with other Advents, although with the condition the world is in right now, one could have large question marks about that. But even if he does, this one will never come again. We recall the classic words of the poet, The tender grace of a day that is gone will never come back to me. The graces of this day will never come again. The opportunities for being loving and humble and generous and self-forgetful in this day will never come again. That is a large thought and we should fill our minds with large thoughts in this season. In the liturgy of this Sunday, the Church is saying, you have to do something. And she is saying, I want to see something. As I was reflecting in prayer on these three readings, which our wise mother, the Church, puts before us, our dear Lord showed me that, in a sense, we need to read them backward that the conclusion, the very strong point, is in the gospel. We begin there, and then go back and see how these fruits appear. We have in the gospel of St. Matthew the narrative of St. John the Baptist. This may seem somewhat in disaccord with the tenderness of the season, whereas it is actually in complete accord. His first word on this great Advent mission is to announce and then to reveal the coming of Christ, linking the whole Old Testament to the New, is repent. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. It is an Advent word. It goes on to say very sternly to the Pharisees and to us, produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. For if we are really doing this, there will be evidence We cannot be working in all earnestness with God's grace to overcome our faults, our blatant faults, and our hidden faults without evidence being given. The community will see it. We will see it if a sister is working very hard not to be involved with herself, but to be involved with the things of God and with the community, with the things of the church. The evidence will be there. If a sister is concerned about working with what she knows in herself are tendencies to a lack of generosity, to selfishness, the evidence will be there. We will see it. If a sister is deepening her prayer life, the evidence will be there. The second reading from Romans tells us what evidence God expects to appear. May the God of endurance, and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another. Romans chapter 15, verse 3. The former translation expressed it as live in harmony. How do we live in harmony? Well, we know that in the world of music from which the figure is taken, we have to be concerned with the other voices. If it's me, 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 I am a soprano. And I sing my part. And I have no thought about blending with the altos or the tenors or the second sopranos. And I keep my own time and make my own interpretation. Then, even if I have a lovely lyric voice, I am a disaster for the choir. The epistle is presenting this concern for others in community living, living in harmony. 
I cannot be self-focused. God is calling us to live in harmony, which is always a going out. I believe I have mentioned in times past a facet of harmony, that when you are singing in harmony, you don't sing by ear. You sing the score. Somebody may have an ear for harmony, and so she doesn't sing the notes that are written, but instead sing something that harmonizes, except it doesn't belong with the organ accompaniment, and it doesn't fit at all with what the third voice is singing. And so it is destructive, because it is a me thing. This is my own harmonic line here that I invent. It is not in the score. And so it is with living in community. It has to be in the score. We follow our observance. We follow recommendations. And we follow the score, which is written by God. We do not, as it were, sing it by ear. Because then we distort the score. We distort the accompaniment. And we make it impossible for the other voices to sing. This is what I mean by reading back. If we are giving evidence of really repenting and looking at our dear Lord and not at ourselves, of looking at the needs of the church and not at ourselves, then we will be a sign of encouragement to one another and not a discouragement. This encouragement that we give to one another in God-focused living, in real concern, not for myself, but for others, is a reaching out to all the hardships and miseries of the world. How many persons throughout the world have nothing of what we have, do not have the care, do not have the food, do not have the shelter? Millions of people are suffering so alone, so untended. If our life is reaching out, we do encourage them. The evidence shows. We read back to the first reading where Isaiah says that it is not by appearance that God judges, nor is it by hearsay that he decides. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. Now, this has something to do with harmony and evidence. We want to ask ourselves some searching questions. Do I go by hearsay? This is the way something affects me. Something offends me, something hurts me, and immediately I react against it. Often it's hearsay. It is not the truth at all. It is never what was meant. It is just that I am so involved in myself that I am ready, on the basis of this hearsay, to misjudge. I lapse into self-pity. I become more self-involved. Then, of course, I disturb the harmony to which we are called in the Sunday liturgy, and I'm not giving the evidence that the church calls me to account for this Sunday. I cannot read this in a detached way and say that St. John the Baptist is talking only to those Pharisees. We each must look into ourselves. This is the beginning of repentance. I place myself in that crowd where the church places me on Sunday. This is one of the wonderful things that has been emphasized so much by Vatican Council II, that God is present in his living word when it is read, and that when the word of God is proclaimed in the liturgy, he is speaking directly to each one of us. And so, in the Sunday gospel, when the word of God says to you and to me, produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, I have to respond. The church is calling me to account through the mouth of her prophet. Let it be a week of evidence. You've been listening to an excerpt from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it inside the free Discerning Hearts app. To obtain a copy of the book, Come, Lord Jesus, visit cluneymedia.com. Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation. To learn how you can support our mission, visit 
DiscerningHearts.com.